Using Windows and Mac OS for many years feels like living in two completely different worlds. One is loud, packed with endless options, and constantly invites you to tweak and customize. The other is neat, polished to perfection, and quietly decides what's best for you. And every time you switch between them, you can't help but wonder, is the grass really greener on the other side? In this video, I've put together 44 key features and differences between Windows and Mac. No myths, no hype, just real facts and honest user experience. What you'll gain, what you might lose, and what new possibilities might open up. Ready for a true side-by-side -side comparison? Then buckle up, it's gonna be a fun ride. At first glance, managing files seems like a boring chore. Open folders, copy stuff, move stuff around. But in reality, this is where one of the first real culture shocks happens when switching between Windows and Mac. Windows takes the more is better approach. File Explorer throws everything at you. Folder paths, tabs, toolbars, loads of file details, all up front, right in your face. Mac does it differently. Finder is like a perfectly minimalist apartment. Everything's clean, everything's hidden, and nothing distracts you. If you want extra features, you have to gently pull them out through settings. Want to see the full file path? Turn it on manually. Want to see available storage space? Dive into the menus. Finder seems to whisper, relax. The less you see, the less you worry. But Mac has a secret weapon. Quick look. One tap on the spacebar, and boom! You instantly preview documents, images, even 3D models without ever opening an app. It feels like your files become transparent. No loading times, no waiting, just instant access. What do Mac and Windows have in common? Both want you to find what you need in seconds, whether it's a file, an app, or the eternal question of what's 153 times four. But their approaches couldn't be more different. Windows Search feels like an overly eager assistant, constantly jumping to the internet, throwing web results at you, and sometimes answering questions you didn't even ask. It's fast, sure, but half the time it feels like you just opened a browser and forgot why. Spotlight on Mac is more like a calm librarian. No unnecessary chatter, just your files, apps, contacts, currency conversions, world clocks, all twice as fast and working even without an internet connection. And it doesn't stop there. Spotlight can find photos based on descriptions. Yep, type, type sunset and it'll pull up your sunset shots, track flights, and even let you email or message a contact directly from the search bar. Windows simply doesn't go that far yet. If file management is just a warm-up, window management is a full-on quest, especially when switching between Windows and Mac. On Windows, everything feels simple and logical. Close a window. The program quits. Maximize a window. It fills the screen, ready for action. Drag a window to the edge, and it neatly snaps into place. On Mac, things get a little more philosophical. Close a window? Nope, the app is still quietly running somewhere in the background. Want to actually shut it down? You'll need to visit the Quit menu or hit Command-Q. The Maximize button also has a mind of its own. On Windows, it simply simply stretches the window to fit the screen. On Mac, that little green button launches it into full screen mode, hiding everything else and whisking you away from your multitasking world. And snapping Windows? Windows makes it feel like slapping a magnet onto the fridge. Quick and satisfying. On Mac, you have to channel your inner wizard. Hold down Option, click, drag, and still, it's not quite the same. To be fair, Mac tries to balance things out with tricks like Stage Manager, which neatly tucks all your open windows to the side, keeping your focus on just one at a time. It's great for staying centered, but classic multitaskers will need some time to adjust. At first, apps might seem like a small thing, a browser here, some office tools there. What more could you need? And then life happens. Suddenly, you're juggling weird file formats, specialized software, and 27 different ways to edit a PDF. This is where the gap between Windows and Mac really starts to show. On Windows, it's simple. If you want an app, chances are it exists, or it will. 
or there are three different versions of it made by three different developers in a contest for who can confuse you more. On Mac, the selection is tighter. Not because the platform is weaker, it's just aimed at a slightly different crowd – designers, musicians, and creative professionals. Here, you're welcomed with free, polished built-in apps like Pages, Numbers, and Keynote, and honestly, they're pretty great. On Windows, installing an app feels like a small ceremony. Download the .exe file, click Next, Next, Finish, and voila, a shiny new icon pops up on your desktop. Sometimes in three places, because the installer decided you really needed a shortcut in the Start menu and on the taskbar too. You know, just to be safe. On Mac, the process feels almost magical. You download a file, open it, drag the app icon into the Applications folder. Done. No endless clicking, no soul-selling license agreements buried in 8-peat font. But here's the catch. A lot of newcomers forget to eject the installer image afterward, leaving it hanging around like an awkward extra shelf you didn't ask for. Sometimes it's not the big features, but the tiny everyday details that decide how comfortable you feel using a computer. Take the delete key, for example. On Windows, you casually delete text forward without even thinking about it. On Mac? Nope. There's only backspace. If you want to delete forward, you have to press FN backspace. It's a tiny thing, but for the first few days, you'll feel like you forgot how keyboards work. Now moving files. On Windows, it's simple. Control X to cut, you have Control V to paste. Done. On Mac, Command X doesn't work for files. Instead, you copy first Command C, then hold down Option while pasting, Options Command V to move them. Your brain will rebel against this at least a few times before giving up and accepting it. Sooner or later, every computer user faces the same question. Where did all my free space go? And that's when the real detective work begins. On Windows, the solution is pretty straightforward. Head into Storage Settings, and you'll get a list of suggestions. Delete old documents, empty the recycle bin, clear app caches, all just a few clicks away. There's even a Free Up Space Now button that wipes out junk in one swoop. On Mac, things are a bit more polished, but just as effective. In macOS storage settings, you'll find built-in optimization options like offloading rarely used files to iCloud, automatically deleting watched movies and TV shows, and clearing the trash every 30 days. Best part? Mac neatly breaks down your storage into categories like documents, apps, photos, and system data, so you can instantly see who's been secretly gobbling up your gigabytes. Everyone loves making their computer feel personal. Some tweak window colors, some rearrange panels, and others turn their desktop into a full-blown theme park. Windows is an absolute playground for customization. Want to change your color theme? Easy. Want to move the taskbar to the top, to the side, or hide it completely? Go for it. Swap out icons, install animated wallpapers, create wild and crazy setups. Windows basically says, do whatever you want. On Mac, the vibe is very different. Minimalism and restraint. Sure, you can switch to dark mode, pick an accent color, and have the have dock automatically high. But anything beyond that, the system politely but firmly says no. On Windows, you're not just customizing. You can completely transform your computer, make it look like classic Windows XP, imitate Mac OS, or turn your desktop into the command center of a spaceship. When you start comparing Windows and Mac OS, it quickly becomes clear. There's no universal winner. There are simply different philosophies. Windows gives you freedom. Tweak, customize, experiment, make mistakes, and tweak again. It's a system for those who like to have full control and are willing to live with a bit of chaos for the sake of endless possibilities. Mac OS offers something else. Order, polish, minimalism. It's built for those who appreciate attention to detail, trust, thoughtful design choices, and prefer to focus on getting things done rather than constantly adjusting settings. 
in the end, the choice doesn't come down to a checklist of pros and cons. It comes down to one simple question. Do you prefer the freedom to shape everything yourself or the harmony of a system that just works out of the box?